We're back, Matt Sims, Phil Sims, and we're breaking down our quarterback rankings for this upcoming NFL season. And we're not going to do the whole NFL right now. We're just going to break it down by division. So we're going to go real slow through each division and really get into the intricacies of what makes these guys great. And yeah, I'm not really sure what the hell I was doing there. Yeah, well, well, who who was that? (laughs) You keep asking who this is, Big Phil. It's just, you know, I'm having fun, all right? I'm not always pretending to be someone, okay? (laughs) Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Thanks for informing me. You you, you give me great info right from the start. I like this. That's right. How you doing, though, big guy? How's everything going? Hey, look, at this time of my life, if I'm doing average, that's great. That's what I am. I'm extremely average. (laughs) That a boy. Except for one thing. What's the one thing I'm great at? What's that? Eating. Eating. Oh, yeah, I'm, a great, I'm a great eater. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and Damn. sleeping. Well, actually. No, uh, no, sleeping's not that great. You complain about your sleeping a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because once I wake up, you, you're up. You'll see one day, you know, when you wake up, it's four o'clock and I go, what the hell am I going to do now? Well, I mean, and, it's a good thing, though. You woke up. You're ready to go. Let's go. You know, what, well, what do you mean? Well, well I'm going to get up too early. I'm going to get up at four o'clock and talk to who? <laughs> My wife? Come on. You know, listen, your mother. Well, she sleeps great. Yeah, that's an understatement. <laughs> and she's she's got ten hours, and she go, "Oh, I'm, I think I'm still tired." Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. are you making breakfast for me today? Of course I am. I do it every day. Oh, but please, oh well, get out of here. Hey, it, I like it. That's, okay, that's your specialty. You're the breakfast yeah. guy. That's yeah, that's a, your role. You know, I made it for great. you all your high school career. You know, had to get up, make you breakfast, take you to school. I mean, you were a pain in the ass. Oh, my but. God, please. You were so excited to do that every day. Oh, doing yeah. Your, doing right. your little word puzzles, too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do those anymore because, you know, the paper, I read everything on the damn computer now. But yeah, go ahead. Right. What are we doing? Let's go. Let's yeah. Go. What all are right. We doing? So we're going we're gonna to start with the NFC South quarterback rankings. All right. Yep. We're, we're going to rank them. From- the bottom of the list all the way to the top, baby. Oh, we're going bottom first. Okay. Yeah, of course. Come on. Come on. We got to build up a little bit hype. And of all course, right. it kind of, you know, well, let's go out as we go. And then we'll what? discuss as well, too, just some honorable mentions as far as the, the backups. premier backups, right, within okay. the division. And I can't lie, uh, to start with the NFC South, I, I had some trouble with my backup list for sure. But at number four right. for the NFC South quarterback ranking breakdown, who do you have at number four, Big Phil? Oh, you know, listen, that was probably the easiest one of all, picking these guys. It's Bryce Young for the Carolina okay. Panthers. I mean, yeah. just a- after last year, the state of the team, but really just going off of him. You know, he uh, – 11 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Uh, I think that, um, you know, one, I didn't like the offense. They were running, uh, things like that. I think he played small, if that's a good word. You know, I hope people understand that. In other words, when there was pressure, he has a hard time with standing in there. One, he's not tall. And the right. other one, he's just not a big guy, so he's not going to stand there and take extra hits. He's not that type of quarterback. Right. But uh, everybody talks, and I believe it too. Dave Canales goes down there, offensive coordinator at Tampa Bay last year. He did a great job, and I think the offense will change, be a little more conducive to help Bryce Young even more than they tried to last year. And something that I think that you mentioned a few different times too last season is that you wish they would have kind of tried to be more effective in the oh. run game, right? Get under center more, be be a little bit tougher at the line of scrimmage and not rely so much on him being in the shotgun and just dropping back and really being the focal point of your team, especially with it being, you know, maybe the fact that they were the least talented team in their division, uh, right. you know, and one of the least talented teams really in, in football that way as far as just how their scheme and their team was built. Um, I, I have faith in Dave Canales to at least – make some improvements because you know the truth is is that it really can't get any worse for him it really not on offense you know we know Bryce is a good decision maker we know that he he can play the game he knows how to play the position right and that's not to be undervalued yeah the biggest thing like you said right is just can we see flashes of his athleticism that we saw in Alabama now at the NFL level you know and I think you're exactly right even Christopher said this too when he was doing his quarterback rankings like he gets overwhelmed with the fact that he has no real big physical measurable traits that help him get out of jams, you know? And and that's the biggest thing is just learning how to be just a great decision maker, a great game manager, and and really just playing the the long game instead of being a superstar that kind of puts the team on his back right away. I also have Bryce Young as the number four quarterback in the NFC South. 
Let me say this real quick about him. I thought last year they tried to duplicate what he was doing at Alabama too much, yeah. putting him in the shotgun all the time. And I thought they were too careful with him too. You know, they're trying to be, let's make sure he does well. And, you know, no, just let it go. Come on. The way you yeah. learn is letting it go and being a little aggressive. And I never really saw him the whole year. I watched all of his games. Right. I never looked at it and went, wow, they're being aggressive today. I like what you said. Get him under center play action passes, separate the pass rush, separate what's downfield, easier to see the deeper your drop is. A so, little more deception too offensively yes. for him as well. Like right let him be a great, you know, handler of the football in the backfield with that play action game. And then also too, just the, the addition of Xavier Leggett, the receiver from South Carolina, yeah. who's a big physical presence that's an explosive football player. Hopefully he can allow them to be a little bit more flexible on offense too because I just think the lack of speed, overall speed in the receiver room definitely hampered Bryce Young as well in his development. Who's Leggett, Leggett remind you of? This is easy. Uh, man, I don't, he's got like – he kind of gives me to a little throwback here, like David Boston vibes. Yeah, yeah, you might. That's a good one. Man, you I know, like David. big, Le strong, physical, you know, can fly. Yeah. Well, who else is from South Carolina? Debo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's got right? some Debo, Debo Samuel. Too. He's, yeah. he's got Debo's legs. He, they might even be bigger. I mean, <laughs> yeah. man, he's, he's impressive to watch. So, okay, we both had Bryce Young at number four. All right, Who do you have ahead. at number? No. All right. Okay. So, yeah, hey, just, sorry, Phil. Sorry, he, Phil. Take even though easy. you're the, the guy, you know, I get to interject hey, sometimes. That's right. I'm the guy. I like yeah. that. Hey, so who do you got guy? number three? Guy. Number yeah. three, I'm going with uh, the Jackie Moon of the NFL. He's a player. He's a coach. He's a manager. He's the point guard, shooting guard, all that. I'm joking. I got Derek Carr as my number three quarterback. And the only reason why I make that joke is because Jackie Moon is a character that Will Ferrell played uh, in a movie. He's a basketball player. Yeah, way over your head. Way so, over, uh, yes. Semi-pro. Yeah. And, you know, he's the owner of the team. He's the starting forward. You know, he's the coach. He's the manager, all this kind of stuff. So, and I kind of teased Derek Carr during this season that he was the, the Jackie Moon of the NFL when they were wow. struggling about halfway through. Um, but Derek Carr is the number three quarterback in the division. Hopefully, with Clint Kubiak, uh, a little bit of the similar recipe that maybe Bryce and Canales will will try to take advantage of too. Clint, you know, obviously being you know the son of a coach and primarily yeah. being more of a traditional offense. Hopefully, they're a little bit more balanced as well in run to pass situations. They get into that play action world that I think Derek does extremely well in as a thrower down the field. And they, we finally see some improvements too from this football team offensively, or more consistency. Really, we saw yeah. flashes, but just not enough consistency from the year. Oh, now. come on, Matt! They went through some periods in games. You just go, "Oh my God, is this professional <laughs> football?" It was unbelievable. No, I'm yeah. serious. I know it was so bad, and yeah. you know, and I watch it, and then all of a sudden, you know, started the fourth quarter, they get good, and you know, they made some, <laughs> they finished a lot of games well. But, you know, you look at Derek Carr, I just want to give 25 and 8 touchdowns, interceptions, almost yep. 4,000 yards, 68% completion. Uh, Clint Kubiak, you said it. Hey, his father, they, he was going to run the ball no matter where he was coaching, head coach, assistant, right. whatever. And the son's going to be the same thing. They're going to institute a lot of these San Francisco thought processes in there, which I think are really good. It's going to help Derek Carr, I think, immensely. Thought my big question why I got him at number three is, is the team, you know, the defense, which was really what they were for so many years, it was just big, rugged, fast, tough. Uh, it it changed a little bit last year. So yeah, that, that makes me wonder. But that's not what we're judging. When I still look at this, you know, some of these are tight, but Derek Carr was number three in, in the NFC South for me. Yeah, and the reason why, again, to reiterate why he's three is just the fact that the guys that I have ahead of him, and I, I honestly almost had a backup of one of the uh, players on the teams at number three ahead of him. Wow. Because I just feel like, you know, there are at times where just, man, just cut it loose. Just cut it loose. Yes. Just play, you know? And I think sometimes that he's missed out, like where we saw the greatness of them, they, they were forced to play aggressively because they needed to get back into games. But then when they had games like under control, it just seemed like too careful, like trying to place the ball too much. And it just was like it was painful at times, like you said. So yeah. that's where I want to see just a little bit more aggressive, you know, Derek Carr 
dropping back and cutting it loose because the guys that are ahead of him on the list, you know, we have no doubts about them in that well, department. Let, let me ask you this. What do I always say about the quarterback position? And it's it's coached too many times trying to play perfection. Right. Okay. We want it perfect. Do this. Take another step. But just play. You said it right. When they were behind and, and it was like do or die, they were really good. Uh, yeah. Man, then they turn it on. And it's not a game of perfection. So quit trying to be perfect, Derek Carr. I think right. that's really uh, my biggest knock on him by far. He tries to be perfect and right. just just play. You know, yeah. don't worry. You can't make every three pointer. Just keep shooting, and you'll hit enough of them. And that yeah. look, he's got talent. He's big. He's mobile. He's got a very strong arm. So there's a lot to work with there at number three, Derek Carr. That's right. Number number. So two. number two. This was tough. Yeah. But I'm going with my man, and that's um, Baker Mayfield. Wow, you did it. How yeah. dare you? I'm calling Baker right now to tell him that you put him number two in his own damn division. Well, whenever I'm around him, I'll be careful. He might whoop my ass, so, so i got to be careful there. <laughs> He'll certainly <laughs> but, try. <laughs> you know, as the old saying is, I, I know I say it all the time, but it's just Todd Bowles loves him. He's his type of player, quarterback. He energizes the team, everything yeah. he does. Uh, listen, he's never seen a guy that's not open. See, he's the opposite of Derek Carr. Right, right. Yeah, which, there's a window. That, the, I like that. I want to see that. I think it's you great. need to have that to be a Super Bowl caliber type of football player. You know, How do you think why, Mike Evans – what do you think Mike Evans thinks about him? Man. He, he you the him. man. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. He definitely got him a good Christmas gift, you know, last year for sure. Because he's like, man, everything that people were saying about you, it's it's wrong. You know, here, here's the other thing. When I, I looked at some of his shots, I just went through about 20 throws just to kind of yeah. get and, – and, you know, you and I talked about this many times, and it was so true. Last year, he settled down a little. He quit trying to just kill everybody with the fastball. I right. thought his pace on the football was better. Still an aggressive decision maker. Yeah. Every play he does, take it to the limit. So he's going to take a lot of sacks, but it's worth it. Don't look at it and go, oh, you got to reduce the sacks. Because the plays he kept going, he made so many big plays on that. Yeah. So, you, you know, this, you got to be careful. Sometimes, oh, we got to cut down on interceptions. No, you know, it's okay. He's, he's going to win right. the battle of great plays in, instead of the interceptions. But this so. is where you've said this too a few times, and I think it's right. Like his huh. style of play and being aggressive matches Todd Bowles in that defense, and that's always key, right? You great know, point. Right, great that's point. the key thing. He he plays aggressive and fast because he knows Todd, hey, we're going to go after the quarterback. You know, We might give up a fast touchdown or we might hit them three plays in a row and cause a turnover, you know? Or yeah. as Dan Quinn used to say, hey, is a three and out the best drive? No, a one and out the best drive. So, you know, that's where I feel like Todd Bowles has that vibe and it matches perfectly. And, you know, Baker might be, I don't even know measurables, right? Like, or metrics, if he's a smaller guy than Derek, like in a, in a right. great way. But he definitely plays bigger and plays stronger and definitely right. utilizes his legs better. So I totally understand why, you know, he's that notch up at the number two position for you. But for me, unfortunately, at number two, I have Kirk Cousins. Okay, I go. put Kirk Cousins at number two. And the reason why I put him at number two is really just because of the fact that, you know, Baker, I thought, really hit a lot of high notes, right, at right. the end of last year. The leadership stuff, everything like that. So it's hard for me to put him back after – you know, even though Kirk was having a great year, making great decisions, probably one of his best years statistically, you know, was going to yeah. happen for him. And, you know, because of the injury, I just feel like there's still there's still a lot to overcome with the injury, new environment. Right. And still being able to play the way that he played off of that injury. That's that's a little concerning to me, too, because we yeah. know Kirk. He's brave as hell. He's one of the bravest quarterbacks in the pocket. Yeah. But he, there's going to be a little bit of that, like, can I stand in there and play the way that I used to play with my Achilles? Or should I just, you know, s survive for the next play? And that's why I kind of put him at number two. Well, he is. I do see him on TV. You know, they're OTAs or whatever they are, throwing the football. It looks pretty looks good. good. Yeah, it's not it's not perfect. You can still see favors that ankle or the Achilles that side a little bit. But he's got plenty of time. But you said it right. I think the thing that comes up about Kirk Cousins that people just don't give enough credit to. 
He is one tough SOB. Yeah. My God, does he stand in a pocket and make big throws down the field yeah. and just get plastered? And the game that always comes to my mind, watching him play San Francisco last year, oh, my gosh. I mean, did yeah. he take a lot of big hits? But, man, he made a lot of big throws in the game, and he was the reason why they won it. But I think he's a good decision maker. His arm, you know, it's not – it's not elite. I mean, as he's far better. Power. He's better than good. You know. I oh mean, yeah, it's it's, better. it's listen. Yeah. He's he's a he's, really good thrower of the football yes. and a passer. And right. like I said, aggressive decision maker. He's going to take some sacks because he hangs in there and hope yeah. lets the play develop and do the right thing. Great decision maker. And uh, you know, so I'm giving him a little credit there. Even though I'm going to go to a little thing here that we're not really going to talk about, but. I see everybody on TV talking about Atlanta, the quarterback. The quarterback, my, he's going to play two years. Michael Penix going to have to wait. And, you know, my thing would be this, Matt, and just see if you agree or disagree. He's got one year. Right. One year. It's this yeah. year. He's got to play well, and they must go to the playoffs. If they don't get those two things, Michael Penix will be the starting quarterback next year for sure that's what uh, i think. honestly i'm gonna cut that even in half it's not even one year well, it's it's eight games like by the eight game mark they're gonna say okay are we rolling are we hitting our mark should we keep yeah. going here or should we honestly start to maybe think about making this move now right, right. Uh, that honestly that's what i think i think that's how tight the window is for him i really think yeah. they have to start hot to give himself that room you know, through the halfway point of the year. Because I think if they're a, a 500 football team and the offense is kind of, you know, sputtering a little bit and whatever, and there's just not much excitement about them and all that kind of stuff, I would not be shocked that they made that move halfway through the season. I'm not going to disagree with that. You know, not that I put a lot of faith in this either. They have the easiest schedule in the NFL. So whatever that means, but it means a little something that yeah. they're, yeah, you know, and they're playing in a division that's not great. So, right. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with that. I think if it if he's well, if he struggled, they're not winning the way they expect, then yeah. that change could happen somewhere during the year. Right. But man, like I said, I think it's got to be playoffs and he's got to be really good in yeah. the the season for him to be the starter next year in Atlanta. So, yeah, there you no go. doubt, no doubt. And and you made a great point too about Kirk, right? About how the fact that yeah, occasionally he does take sacks because he does hang in there, right? And right. he is trying to push the football down the field. And that's why I did give Baker again another slight nod over him at the number one position. So my number one quarterback in the NFC South is Baker. Your number right. one quarterback in the NFC South is Kirk Cousins. And right. the reason why I have Baker ahead of Kirk is because of that outside the play design, playmaking ability and toughness. The right. scrambling, running for touchdowns, running for first downs. You know, I think that attitude, again, it just it kind of matches to what they need in that football team. So I yeah. think it's just a match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, last year, and I even said it to you on, on a show, I feel like not too long ago, where, man, I thought Baker and the Bucks were two or three plays away from going to the damn Super Bowl in a lot of ways. I feel yeah, like yeah. if they would have beaten close. Detroit, they would have given San Francisco – a lot of problems in that game and would have had just as much a chance to beat them as the Detroit. It's Detroit. Line. Oh, yeah. I agree with that. I definitely so agree with that. So. That's where I feel like they, they were closer than I think a lot of people give them credit for. And I think there'll be another contender in the NFC again this year. The big thing I like, we're going to do some backups real quick, but the big thing yeah. I like what you said is the team matches the offense right. fits the defense. The defense fits the offense. You know, I, I love teams when they do that. Not all the teams in the NFL do it. But it's a that's a great example down in Tampa Bay, and they so are bringing a new and both these guys are you know working with new offensive coordinators, and that's right. not to be you know well, sh man, it's interesting. This whole division has new offensive coordinators, so there there might be some growing pains for them. Actually, I really didn't even think about it until now. But yeah, like Liam Cohen coming over there from the Rams, uh, man, I, I guess you know Zach. Sean McVay, he knows he knows how to coach some coaches now. You yeah, know, you got right. Zach right. Robinson over there in Atlanta. Um, They're everywhere. And, and Clint Kubiak, Dave Canales. So we have some quarterbacks that have to learn on the fly with their new offensive coordinators in this new regime with their offenses. Despite all their experience, uh, except for Bryce Young, you know, there's still going to be that that time to learn under what the new coaching staff is trying to implement. Well, the good thing is. 
OTAs, mini camps, practice, always, yeah. you know, all those things. I think that helps everybody adapt a little uh, quicker. And yeah. you know, when the season starts, nobody cares what what's going on there. You just got to get it. You got to get it done. That's it. Get it done. That's right. That's right. So hey, right, what's so your backups. what's your number yeah. four? Give me your number four in the NFC South backups. Who's four? All right. So number four, I have. This was tough. I really the four three spot was very difficult. I put Taysom Hill. I I don't even know oh. if that's like legitimate or not. I mean. Yeah, no. I feel like that was a cop out answer. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> that was a cop out. That was pretty weak. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm on the same thing. It's got? New Orleans. Jay Kaner, you know, it's so uh, him and Spencer Rattler are the backups. I guess and so. It, yeah. I don't I, that's where I like I, I didn't know where the hell to go with. I knew it was New Orleans. I just didn't know where what direction, you know. I know. How about that? We got three cha- three different quarterbacks that we could talk about there. All right, number three would be me. I'm taking Kyle Trask. In Tampa Bay is number three. Agree. Hey, Same look, thing, big, Kyle Trask. Big guy, good decision maker, and really, you know, great uh, experience in college. He knows, you know, he really knows how to play. And, right. But what's the issue, well, though, here? Why is he number three as the backup in the NFC South? Well, you know, nope. I think the big thing is he's not mobile and he doesn't have Baker's arm. But I uh, just... <laughs> You know, so yeah, but, but I did also, like a lack right. of experience in the NFL game. You know, so well, I know he played too. a lot in college, but like I, I haven't well, seen one year. anything yet, right? Yet to really say, all right, th- he he's a solid backup compared to the next two guys in our list. I got gotcha. you. Oh, okay. Well, who do you got? Number two. Number two is Andy Dalton. I think oh, uh, you know Andy wow. Dalton's number two for me. Decisions, right? Played really tough when he did play last year. I mean, they essentially. Uh, just sent him there for a sacrificial lamb out there in Seattle yeah. last year. Just say, hey, Andy, our rookie is just out on his feet. Go out there and get crushed and still throw for 350 and, and play your balls off. And he did, you know, but he, it really was. It was like they literally sacrificed him right there on the altar. And he did great. And I still have great faith in him that if the surrounding cast is solid, he can still get the job for you and still be a solid backup and keep your, keep your team's hope in line uh, and win a few games. Yeah, he's got all the experience. Went to the playoffs, I think, five straight years with the Bengals. I got Andy Dalton as my number one in the NFC South backup. Oh, okay. So who's your number two? Well, my number two was Michael Penix. Yeah. You know, know, he's a rookie going against Andy Dalton, who's done it so many times. There's no breaking him in. Andy's going to be ready as soon as he takes that first snap. So that that, I did it that way. Look, do I like Michael Penix? I'm not going to argue that. Yeah, I, I like him a lot. I mean, right. man, I, I just I think Michael Penix didn't get the credit he deserved in the pre-draft process by everybody, and maybe not even from me. You know, the rankings. I was like, oh man, I don't know what to do with these rankings of these guys. It's <laughs> I, I like I like to, I liked all of them in some form yeah. or another. Of course, I think, yeah. a, I think it was a great uh, class. But the more I watched Michael Penix, the more I kept going, damn. It's yeah. just you know I paid more attention. What he was doing in the pocket, moving, looking people off. It was just, it was pro football as far as how you want a quarterback to play in the pocket. What right. do I wish he would have ran a little more? Yeah, but God, why run when he made all those great throws into tight coverage and yeah, uh, everything? So, yeah, that's my list. So, and that's that's number, why I have him as the number one backup number one. in the division, right. you know, and I honestly almost put him at number three as the top four quarterbacks in the division. And, and, and I did, I almost, I was like, I yeah, Derek, Derek Carr, Michael Penix. And I was like, uh, it's really Michael Penix. If I was being really true to my heart, but for the sake of the exercise, we'll include everybody. But you know, <laughs> Michael Penix to me is someone that talk about years of experience in college that will pay off for him. Whereas Kyle Trask, like, yeah, he played a lot in college and he hasn't really played a ton in the pros. Michael he Penix played one year really in college, Kyle Trask. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like, but it was a know, lot. It was a lot, right? A lot of yeah, throws, right? A lot. Michael Penix has has played a ton, right? And man, his skill set to me, you know, he is arguably the best thrower of the ball out of this whole group that we just discussed, out of the eight quarterbacks that we just listed. He's the best oh, yeah. thrower by far, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna He's the most dynamic thrower, right, by yeah. far in that group. And I, mean, I just feel like he'll be able to transition to the – you know, I saw a few of those clips too, like you were saying. Like I saw – uh, you know, Kirk throwing in Atlanta. Then I saw a few clips of Michael Penix and I was like, damn, it looks real. Not, it doesn't look good. It looks super easy, super yes. easy and fluid it for is. him. Right. And that's where I think his game is going to transition extremely well 
to the NFL because yeah. of his skill set and what he's done in college. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, that's why I have him at one. I know Andy's a, a tried and true veteran, but, you know, Michael Pennis has got that, like, I'm just that guy, you know, kind of playing style to him. And I think that'll translate very well to the NFL. Hey, look, you know, and he's bigger than everybody thinks, too. I mean, yeah. you know, but yeah. he's got big, big shoulders, long arms, and, of course, huge hands. All those things are great prerequisites to be well, a, a good dome. thrower. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's got to be in a dome. I'm, I've got good weather. Oh, he's got to go to Tampa Bay and Carolina outside. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. And, of yeah. course, yeah. And in Washington, you know, they play in a lot of bad weather games. They got Oregon. You know, they got some – games where you travel or whatever. And, you know, at Washington, when that stadium they got up there, I mean, that's a wind tunnel for sure, just looking yeah. at it. So, but all good stuff. That was fun to do. Good stuff. So, so that's all we got for the NFC South breakdown. Just want to give a quick shout out to uh, our, our sponsor here, Melon, right? The hat that I'm wearing. Melon yeah. hats, one of the best durable. Wear it out on the practice field. Wear it here for the studio. Looks good. Looks sharp. Machine washable. That's good for me too because I'm a dirty SOB. All right, so I need that type of hat player. Still got to get you one. Actually, Lindsay, oh, one of our producers well, here you. at Believe, took it very personal when I said, you know, we got to get one that fits your head. She texted me. She goes, yes, we'll, we'll send you some extra large hats for Big Phil. I said, no, I was just joking, but it's good. <laughs> no, that I need an extra large. It. Yeah. <laughs> I need an extra large. Yes. It's and, a snapback, you know, yeah. so you, it, uh, it could fit you. It could fit oh, it you does. Much. Okay. Yeah. But All yeah, right. Melon, go to melon.com backslash. Right promo code sims and uh that's all our breakdown for today we got believe thank you again all right big yep. phil you the man that's all we got for the nfc south breakdowns we'll be back with our next show with the afc south quarterback ranking breakdowns see you next time peace peace